everybody, welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. This shit is not for kids tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the Survivor Series 2019 full show review and results for you guys. How these videos work is pretty much I'm going to run through the entire car, breaking down every single thing that happened at Survivor Series 2019, letting you guys know my personal thoughts and opinions on the matches, the feuds coming in, what I expected out of the match, how it turned out, the attires, anything unique that happened, and everything in between. Coming into this show, I was actually very excited for it. Following War Games, I knew it was going to be a really good show. War Games knocked it out of the park, as they always do in NXT. And then adding NXT to the main roster for Survivor Series, I was really pumped to see how this show would go, see how things turned out, see how how they would book some things, and uh, look, we're going to see tonight how that fleshed out. Big hype coming in, guys. Would it live up to it? Let's go ahead and break down every matchup and get started and go into Survivor Series 2019. So starting things off with the pre-show, guys, we did start the night with a 10-team interbrand tag team battle royal. There were 10 different teams across NXT, SmackDown, and Raw entered into this matchup. I actually did not get to see this match, but at the end, I did catch like the last 10 seconds of it, and Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode, or Robert Roode, eliminated the Street Profits to win the battle royal and win it for SmackDown. So SmackDown gets one tally. They are keeping up with the scoreboard at the bottom of the screen, just like they've done in years past. I heard mixed things about this battle royal. I heard that it was pretty entertaining, but I also heard that they eliminated the NXT teams in the first three minutes of the thing and they kind of just threw them in as like an afterthought. So I can't really comment on this match, but I do know that Ziggler and Rude did pick up the win and I'm a fan of Dolph Ziggler so I guess that works for me. It's pretty much a meaningless battle royal, just a tick for SmackDown on the scoreboard. Next up on the pre-show guys, we did have the triple threat match for the Cruiserweight Championship between Leo Rush, Akira Tozawa, and Kalisto each represented from their brand. I'm a big Leo Rush guy so I was actually really pumped for this. I, I really liked Kalisto's singles run back in 2016 I believe, you know, when he was competing for the U.S. title, he had a couple reigns there. And then Akira Tozawa is always a great worker, so I knew that this one was going to be pretty entertaining. And they definitely lived up to it. I thought it was pretty nice. It was pretty high impact, very fast paced, and I think these guys tore it up. And I think these guys put on a really good showing. Leo Rush does ultimately win with the Frog Splash at the end to pick up a victory for NXT, so at this point, it is SmackDown 1, NXT 1, Raw 0. All three guys look great in this match, and I am happy with this outcome. Leo Rush remains your Cruiserweight Champion and picks up a win for NXT. Next up, guys, we had a match that I I was really looking forward to, and I was actually pretty upset that it got moved to the pre-show. I did not know this until they literally came out on, uh, you know, on the pre-show. I was like, oh, what the hell is this? I don't know where I missed that, but the Triple Threat Champions Tag Team Match between the Viking Raiders, the New Day, Big E, and Kofi Kingston, and the Undisputed Era, represented by Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. Now, all three sets of champions from all three brands, SmackDown, Raw, NXT, very hyped for this. You had three great teams, and I think this match was pretty good. You know, I enjoyed it at times. It was, like, I, I I don't know how to really feel about it. I feel like NXT really didn't get a big bone in this one as, as far as like it seemed like Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish were just bumping their asses off. I even tweeted about it. It just seemed that like I don't know. It didn't seem like they got any really big moves in. It seemed like they were just selling and bumping and selling and bumping the entire time. Uh, a, a move here and there but no big moments for Undisputed Era. I could be wrong about that. It just didn't seem like it to me. I don't know. It seemed like mostly Vi Viking Raiders look like stars in this. I know they are stars. They look great and I'm glad that they did win. They did defeat New Day and Undisputed Era, which I really agree with. I think that was the right call, and I figured that would happen. So at the end of this match, it was 1-1-1, all three brands going into the main show, but I felt like Undisputed Era really didn't get a good showing. I felt like they were just bumping and, and making everyone else look good, and I can kind of agree to a certain extent. It just didn't seem like they did anything good. I know they came out of the War Games match, which, um, you know, it kind of correlates. You know, they didn't do so well in this match because they literally went through hell last night, but uh, I would have liked to seen a little bit better moments from them in this match, but I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Am I crazy? I don't know. Would have been thrilled to see an Undisputed Era get the win, but I did pick up Viking Raiders, and I, I predicted them to win this match, and I think it was the right call. So Viking Raiders do defeat New Day and Undisputed Era here at Survivor Series. So the main show opened up with the 5-on-5-on-5 five -on -five -on -five Survivor Series traditional elimination match between Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. Raw represented by Charlotte, Asuka, Kyrie, Sane, Natalya, and Sarah Logan. SmackDown represented by Sasha Banks, Carmella, Nikki Cross, Lacey Evans, and Dana Brooke. And Team NXT represented by Rhea Ripley, Candice LeRae, Io Shirai, Bianca Belair, and Tony Storm. Now coming into this, I was actually kind of pumped up for it to see how it went, see how it booked out, guys. And I gotta be honest with you, I was not a fan of this matchup 
up at all. I don't know what it was. It just seemed kind of soft. It was kind of all over the place. Uh, don't get me wrong. There were some cool key moments. I, I thought that, you know, Asuka betraying Team Raw and Green misting Charlotte in the face getting her eliminated is great. That books you forward with a feud on Raw. They have long ties, so that's some cool long-term storytelling right there. There were some cool spots here and there. Nothing too over the top. I did like a few of the spots, though. The main story of the matchup, though, was when Candice LeRae and Io Shirai, like, nothing even happened to them, really, and it seemed like they, they, they are on the outside selling injuries, and, you know, Raw and SmackDown are taunting them, talking shit to them, and they're like, you know, yeah, get big bitch and all this stuff. So they take Candice LeRae and Io Shirai away, and uh, so a team NXT is down to three people, Bianca Belair, Tony Storm, and Rhea Ripley, and then after that, it was just kind of convoluted. Like, people just start getting eliminated left and right, left and right, left and right. So ultimately, it comes down to Natalia, Sasha Banks, and Rhea Ripley. I've always been a big supporter of Rhea Ripley. I've always been a big fan of hers. I think she's fantastic. I love this big push that she's getting. Just wanted to add that in. But Sasha Banks and Natalia are teasing like them teaming up and taking on Rhea Ripley. You know, like, whatever. They're like, yeah, bro, we're about to kick your ass. And then, all of a sudden, Sasha just turns Natalia away, punches her in the face one time, just hits her with a punch. No finisher, no backstabber, no nothing. Just punches her in the face real quick one time, pins her one, two, three, and eliminates her. I was like, dude, what the hell is going? Like, I don't know, man. That's just completely, I don't, I don't know, just making people look dumb. So Rhea Ripley and Sasha Banks would go back and forth for a bit, having some cool spots. I just love Rhea's intensity, man. That's one thing. That's why I love Asuka. That's why I love Sasha. That's why I love Becky. They they bring it, dude. They bring it. They're not soft. They're not, you know, ricocheting off the ropes, like, with ease and, like, just look totally terrible. They look great in what they do. So out of nowhere, here comes Io Shirai and Candice LeRae. They come back down to the ring, and they distract the referee, and Rhea Ripley gets the upper hand. Candice LeRae di distracts the referee. Io Shirai hits a shotgun drop kick onto Sasha Banks. Rhea Ripley with the riptide, and one, two, three. It is over. Team NXT wins, and I guess it was all a ruse. Candice and Io Shirai weren't even injured, and so NXT picks up the victory. So at this point, they're up 2-1-1 one to one over Raw and SmackDown, but I did not think this was a good way to open the show. I understand you're trying to space out those big matches between the women and men. It just was very slow paced and it just wasn't booked very well I guess. However I'm very glad with the result. I'm so happy for you know Rhea Ripley and Team NXT. I thought that was badass and I am loving the push that Rhea Ripley is getting right now because I think she totally deserves it and she is a big time future of WWE in general. But anyways guys Team NXT does win the women's side of the Survivor Series matchup. Next up, guys, we had the triple threat match, the champion versus champion versus champion match between SmackDown, Shinsuke Nakamura, NXT's Roderick Strong, my boy, one of my favorites in the entire world, and Monday Night Raw's AJ Styles, who is the United States champion. And my God, guys, this is probably the match that I was most looking forward to on this card in full. I was just really, really looking forward to this. And did they live up to the hype? I, I love this match. Thought it was brilliant. I love just the intensity that every man brought. The chemistry just flowed so well. And you can tell that these guys really wanted to put on a show, and I, I wouldn't expect anything less. You know, these three guys, every time they step in the ring, they want to bring it. They do want to put on a great showing, and that's why I love all three of these guys and, and respect them so much. Just a fantastic showing between all three. Great spots, just great interlocking of styles, and just, just fantastic stuff, man. If you guys missed this match, definitely go check it out. The end of the match came when AJ Styles went for the phenomenal forearm. He nails Shinsuke in the face, and then out of nowhere, Roderick comes in, throws AJ out of the ring, and pins him one, two, three, and escapes with the victory. Really classic, really nice, man. Just so good. Roger Strong just brings the intensity, man. He's just so fun to watch. Unique offense, and just he flies around the ring, and he just does not give a damn. I freaking love him, dude. Easily one of my favorite talents right now. But holy Christ, did this matchup make up for the lack of the intensity in the women's match? I really enjoyed this, man. So happy with Roddy winning, and it surprised me so much because you guys know I'm a big Roddy fan, and, and I did not expect them to get the win here. NXT up 3-1 one to one. Could the rest of the brands come back on Survivor Series night? We're going to find out in the rest of this show, but man, what a match. Holy shit, Brad. This match right here might be a match of the year contender. My God, Adam Cole, the NXT champion, taking on Pete Dunne, two of my favorites in the world, two of my favorites in NXT, obviously, if that's the case. NXT is just full of talent right now, guys. I mean, my God, Cole, Dunne, Balor, Strong, Undisputed Era. I mean, my God, the list keeps going. I could go on. But this match right here, ladies and gentlemen, is a beautiful showcase of what NXT is all about. Just hard-hitting, never quit, never give in to the formulaic garbage 
garbage. Put your body on the line. Give us all you got. Put everything you have in every match. I love the story of the match, you know, because because Adam Cole, the whole question was coming in, can he put up a fight? Can he even live after that spot he took from the top of the cell, from the top of the cage against Team Ciampa in the War Games match? Can he even fathom it? Can he even compete? Pete Dunne had his knee wrapped up from the triple threat match with Priest and Dane, and so they sold it the whole match. Both men's counters and their offense in this match was ridiculous. Panama Sunrise on the apron. Pete Dunne going for the moonsault over Adam Cole after he scouted it earlier in the matchup. Hits a super kick like we saw with Ricochet before. Holy God in heaven, man. This was just a beautiful display of football. I mean, I could just go on for days. Just insinuating how much I love these two men. This is just great, dude. This, this is just, just Christ. Uh... I love this match. I loved it from start to finish. I love the story. I, I think this is a beautifully perfect booked match, guys. The end of the match, Pete Dunne goes for the bitter end reversed into a Panama Sunrise like a Canadian Destroyer. Onto the neck of Dunn. Last shot. One, two, three. Cole retains and my god, I love this, dude. This is just epic. Cole is just fantastic. He just proves it every single time he steps in the ring. No matter who he's fighting, Cole is, is the man. And Pete Dunn is as well. I love them both. They're both fantastic. I freaking love them, dude. This is good stuff, man. You gotta watch it. If you missed this match, please go back and watch it. But man, Cole does retain, and I'm happy either way. I would have been, I would have been marking out either way. Great shit, guys. Great shit. Next up, guys, we have the Blue Universal Championship match between the Fiend Bray Wyatt taking on Daniel Br. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Hang on, let me fix it. There we go. Just beautiful, isn't it? I mean, isn't this fantastic how you can see all the action and it's not annoying and just getting on my nerves? I'm just kidding, guys, but seriously, I am not, I'm not a fan of the red lights. I, I don't know why. I just don't, I don't understand it. Like, I think for the entrance, it'd be cool, but during the match, I just feel it's a little distracting. And one thing I thought about was, like, you know, WWE controls the lighting, so are they helping The Fiend? Like, is it, aren't they creating a disadvantage for anybody The Fiend takes on? They're making it harder on his opponents to see The Fiend, to take on The Fiend. And I guess it's a disadvantage for both, but, like, the red lights are supposed to be, like, an eerie thing for The Fiend. So, I don't know, man. I'm just not a fan of it. I think they're unnecessary, and I think they'd be cool for the entrance. But after that, I think regular lighting is completely fine. So, like, if The Fiend's in the Elimination Chamber... Is the entire chamber match going to be red? I just, I don't know, man. I wouldn't like, I, I hope to God that doesn't happen. But anyways, guys, this matchup was pretty bare bones. It wasn't a squash match. The crowd was really, really behind Daniel Bryan. Like, they were very behind Daniel Bryan. Like, he is as over as he's ever been. Like, this crowd has been on their damn hands, sitting on their hands all night, and then Daniel Bryan starts to yes chant. My God, is it, like, I feel like we're back in the yes movement. But ultimately, guys, I can't take the Fiend seriously in singles matches like this. I just, uh, after Hell in a Cell, the way they booked him, the way they portrayed him, I love the Fiend character. I think it's great. I love Bray Wyatt's work. I think he's absolutely fantastic. He's so talented. But the way they booked him in that Hell in a Cell match with Seth Rollins and the way they portrayed him and the way they made him look unstoppable and unbeatable, after all the weapon shots and all the crazy things that took place in that matchup and him kicking out at one every single time and just pretty much selling ten stomps and still, you know, getting up at one or two, I cannot take Daniel Bryan hitting him with a running knee once seriously and him kicking out at two. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's kind of ruined for me at that point. It's probably going to take a while before I take it seriously again. And I love the Fiend character. It's just something that I have to point out and tell you honestly how I'm feeling about it. I do love the Fiend. I do love Daniel Bryan and I agree with the Fiend winning here. I'm just not sure how I feel about it going forward as far as defending the championship and wrestling. But anyways guys, uh, the Fiend does win like I expected and uh, it was super cool to see the crowd stand up for Daniel Bryan so well and uh, it looks like face Daniel Bryan is in full swing. Next up, guys, we had the 5-on-5-on-5 five -on -five -on -five Traditional Survivor Series Elimination Match between Team Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. For Team Raw, we had Seth freaking Rollins, Kevin Owens, Ricochet, Randy Orton, Drew McIntyre. SmackDown had Trash King Corbin, Mustafa Ali, Roman Reigns, Chad Gable, Braun Strowman. And Team NXT had Tommaso Ciampa, Matt Riddle, Keith Lee, Damian Priest, and Walter. Now, coming into this match, I thought it was pretty interesting they added Walter to the team. I'm not big on Damian Priest. I think he has some up and downs. To him. I think he's going to get a little bit better, but for the most part, I'm not the biggest fan of him, even though he is kind of streaky. He can be talented. Now, one thing that I tweeted about during the show, guys, is that the Survivor Series matches just make talent look weak, and we find that in the first few minutes of the match when Walter is first eliminated by literally nothing. Like, these people in these matches, these men get eliminated by nothing. Like, 
one finisher or like one big move and they're gone. Like, but in a regular singles match, is they're 11 minutes in kicking out a finisher. So I'm not big on that. I just think that it takes it should take like maybe two or three finishers back to back to back or something more creative to make these matches flow better because I don't like just one move and all oh, it's over. One move and it's over. And then it just eliminates like three or four in a row. It's just, I don't know, man. I'm not big on that. I feel like the end of the matchup was much better. The last 10 to 12, 15 minutes, I think, were much better than the first 12 or so minutes. And uh, I, I don't know. Some people had some cool flashes. You know, we had cool moments here and there. Matt Riddle had some good moments. I mean, there were some, there were some cool moments in this match. Don't get me wrong. Matt Riddle pinned Randy Orton with Randy Orton returning the favor on Riddle. Again, there are some cool spots in these matches, and I love all the talent that we get in these matches. One thing I also want to add is I didn't like the teams coming out together. I understand it, but it is it just looks lame. Like, if you're going to do that to cut down on time, you have to understand that it is going to look lame. Coming out to the intro theme to the to the show, I, I don't know, man. But, I mean, it had some cool moments. Again, it had some cool moments. I think Keith Lee looked like a damn star. The way he, he literally spirit-bombed Roman Reigns to hell. That was the biggest power bomb ever. Roman sold it like a champion. Keith Lee sold the spear like a champion. Seth Rollins rocking the beautiful Chicago Bulls-inspired attire even though everybody was booing the crap out of him. CM Punk chants rained out through the arena at one point during this match, so that kind of just tells you a little bit. But ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, Team SmackDown would win. It would come down to Rollins, Lee, and Roman. Roman would... Keith Lee would eliminate Seth Rollins, and then Roman would eliminate Lee to pick up the win for SmackDown, making it 3-2-1 to one at this point, I think, NXT SmackDown, and then Raw. And again, some good moments in this match, but ultimately, I, I, I give it like a middle-of-the-road grade, just because at the beginning, I was like, I'm not really feeling then they picked it up towards the end but team smackdown does pick up the win one thing that i also forgot to mention is that kevin owens was you know teasing he he wrestled for nxt last night at war games and he was sort of teasing you know who do i want to frog splash he ended up frog splashing chad gable instead of champa and then it ended up costing him later in the match getting him eliminated so i do like that storyline continuation next up guys was the wwe championship match the no holds bar championship match i should say brock lesnar taking on Rey mysterio here and i was really interested to see how they book this thing, you know, we were really interested to see the David versus Goliath matchup, much like we've seen with Balor and Bryan and Styles. So I was really interested in this one, and I think it lived up to it. I thought it was pretty solid. You know, I think that the booking on it was great. Um, midway through the match, you know, Ray's been beaten down. He tried to use the lead pipe. He, you know, he's been thwarted in all of his efforts. Out comes Dominic, and, you know, he's pleading with Brock. You know, he's trying to throw in the towel for his father. Ray Mysterio from behind, low blows Brock. Low blow from Dominic. Uh, both hit a double 619, both hit frog splashes, Brock kicks out, and then he Germans Dominic, he F5s Ray, and the match is over, and I thought that was the right way to book it. I thought it was really solid. I'm not big on Dominic, you know, I'm not really big on his abilities just yet. I know he's young and everything, I know his, you know, his, his promo ability and all that, but this was a very fun way to showcase him and to get his feet wet in the business in this, in this capacity um, on WWE television and everything, and it was really good stuff. Brock Lesnar does retain, which we all thought, and I thought that, you you know, again, the booking was good here. I agree with it. And overall, just a fun match. And for our main event, we had the Triple Threat Champion versus Champion versus Champion match between the man Becky Lynch, the Raw Women's Champion, the NXT Women's Champion, Shayna Baszler, and the SmackDown Women's Champion, Bayley. Now, coming in, I was hyped for this match. You know, I'm not big on Shayna Baszler. I think she's pretty boring. I think that, you know, she's just kind of, I don't know, just stale. She's literally the female version of Baron Corbin, but I like her more than Trash Corbin. That's, I, I think that that's kind of a, I just think her style in the ring's pretty boring, and I think the match actually reflects that here tonight. This match just was not doing it. I do not think this match should have main evented. I just was not high on this match. It was very slow paced and not a lot of pops. It was just, I don't know, man, not a good way to end the show. I feel like the women were the worst part of this show. They started the show very stale and they ended the show very stale. Very just not good performance in my opinion. Again, there were flashes here and there of decency in this match, but I don't know, man, just didn't bring it tonight for me. However, Shayna Baszler does win here, giving the victory ultimately to NXT. NXT destroyed the night. They won 4-2-1 to two to one and destroyed the main roster in quotations of Raw and SmackDown. So I don't know where this goes from here. It'll probably just be nothing. Like, they'll probably treat that as nothing and whatever, and I'm sure it won't be a big deal to, you know, the main roster. They probably won't do anything about it, but I thought that was really awesome. I think this is epic. I think that that's the way it should be, and I love that. I did not expect Vince McMahon and NXT, or I did not expect Vince McMahon and, you know, WWE to book it that way, but they did, and, and hats off to them for doing it that way because they proved last night and 
tonight why they are the best. But Shayna Baszler taps Bayley out to win the match here over both champions, and I said this in my predictions video. I said this is the way to do it because if you do it this way, you are ultimately pushing her up like you've been. You've, you're continuing the momentum that she's had for so long, and her undefeated streak or whatever it is is still going. However, I feel like this position should have been given to Asuka when Asuka was on the come up. I think Asuka is a much better wrestler. I think Asuka is a much better performer. The only thing she can't really do is cut a great promo, which is unfortunate because I think this would have been a much better position for Asuka, but it is Baszler, and I'm glad that they continued this with Baszler. Uh, I don't know, but that is pretty much Survivor Series 2019, man. I thought overall it was a great show as far as the middle part. Uh, all The first match and then the last match was Ed. The theme was okay. Uh, the rest of the stuff was pretty solid. I thought it was a pretty good show overall. Match of the night is easily Adam Cole versus Pete Dunne. I mean, my God, guys, they freaking brought it like nobody's business. Freaking love that match. I think it's fantastic. I will go back and watch that one multiple times. Roderick Strong's match was also very excellent. Just really good stuff, man. Overall, I, th I thought it was a solid show. I enjoyed it, and I guess we'll see where we go from here. I think December's pay-per-view is TLC, so we'll go. We'll see where we go. I hate the gimmick pay-per-views, but you know what? It is what it is. We'll see if any more storylines branch off of this. I was expecting Ronda Rousey. I would have liked to seen Ronda Rousey come out, but you know, it is what it is. Whatever. But thank you guys so very much for watching. That does it for my Survivor Series 2019 full show review and results. Hope you guys did enjoy. Comment down below what you thought of Survivor Series. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.